Hey guys, welcome to another one of my uh, tutorials. Um, this one is going to be about virtual desktops. Uh, Windows 10 introduced a new feature called virtual desktops, or having multiple desktops on a single machine with a single monitor. Uh, if you are familiar with Linux, you probably already know that most flavors of Linux, of CentOS and Ubuntu, already have this feature. And now Windows has it as well. And how does it work? And what is virtual desktops? So right now, I'm running on a single screen uh, desktop. Uh, you can see right now I have Adobe Acrobat open. I have Word 2016 open, and I also have Excel 2016 open. So I have three applications on my desktop. And when I click on my little task view button here on the bottom, you'll see that it is now showing me that I have four different applications open. I have my Excel, Word, Acrobat DC and I have my recording program which I'm using to make this video. Um, all of these programs are now on one single desktop. I'll exit uh, task view and I'll even open an additional one. I'll open notepad. Most simple application of them all. And now when I go to task view you'll see how it's immediately getting cluttered. Now I have notepad open, Excel open, Word open, Acrobat DC open, and Camtasia open. So how do we enable virtual desktops? Well, it's already built in, and you've probably seen it a hundred times, just haven't quite put your finger on it. When I click on task view, on the bottom right corner, right here, there's a little plus button that says new desktop. And if I click on that, it's going to create a secondary desktop for me. And if I click on it, you'll notice now that all my applications have now disappeared, but they haven't really disappeared. Word is actually still open, Excel is still open, um, Notepad is still open. All the things which you've seen previously are still open, but they're open on desktop number one. You see? But it's too cluttered and I have all these windows here, so now I can just click on my task view button and I can immediately switch to desktop number two. And desktop number two, I currently don't have any applications open. Um, suppose I'm going to open up Google Chrome. So I'm going to go and I'm going to open up Google Chrome on desktop number two. Now notice that I still can't see any of the applications on desktop one, and the reason for that is to omit cluttering between um, uh, old applications which you have open. So you can have up to as many desktops as you want. And the cool thing about this is that if you're doing, let's say, web design or graphic design, or you're just reading multiple things or visiting different pages, and you just don't want to get caught up with all these icons and task taskbar buttons and all these things, the best option for you is to use these virtual desktops. So you see here that I'm using um, desktop one and desktop two. Now I'm going to kill desktop two by clicking the little X here and close it out. And I'm going to show you, let's say I'm working just on Word, right? I'm working on Microsoft Word, and I don't want Word to be in desktop one anymore. So I can click on my task button view. I can right click on Word and I can choose move to a new desktop. And what that's going to do is going to take it away from desktop number one and now just leave it on desktop number two. Um, same way I'm able to control what goes where. I can actually right click something and I can choose move it to desktop one. I can move it back to the original desktop, my primary desktop, or I can choose to put it in a brand new desktop. Um, so what am I really teaching you here? I'm teaching you that you're able to control your workspace by having multiple desktops, um, virtual desktops or virtual windows. And that way you prevent cluttering. And this is really the beauty of um, Windows 10, one of the greatest features, one of the new features, which I happen to use sometimes because let's say I want to work in Excel on one desktop and I have all these other windows that pertain to Excel um, and I don't want to mix that with my other work. So I have two desktops. I can add an additional desktop or an additional desktop. You see I have four different desktops right now and when I go back to desktop one where I have all my applications open, I could say, okay, let's send Excel to desktop two, let's send Word to desktop three, um, and let's send Google Chrome to desktop four. And now if you look on the bottom, you'll see that each one of my virtual desktops has it, their own icon, its own personal um, workspace dedicated specifically for the application that I chose to send to that desktop. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? It's something that Windows did not have before. Uh, it was just recently introduced. Um, now, you'll notice that Camtasia is open across all desktops because it is being used to record each and every desktop. So while an application is universal, it'll appear in every desktop. 
And um, here, let me close Adobe over here. Let's go back to my task view and let's send Notepad to desktop number four. Now my primary desktop is clean. I've actually actually nothing on there. It's completely empty, giving me room to do anything new that I want to do without interfering with any of my work um, that is in desktop two or desktop one. You could see I could just go into Excel and, for example, I can actually say I'm working. Say I, I put in um, uh, here. Let me put some values in Excel for you. And. Um, Suppose this is a worksheet I'm working on, just a bunch of random numbers, right? I'm going to go and switch back to desktop one, and I can let someone use my computer, or I can do something completely separate and different from what I would have been doing in Excel. I just don't want anyone touching that program. I don't want to risk it crashing, and I don't want to get lost and confused. I can switch right back to desktop two, and Excel is still open with all my data and all my work. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you guys. I wanted you guys to understand the beauty of having this multiple desktops. Now if I close desktop 2 with Excel on it, you'll see that Excel has now moved back to desktop 1. So when you close a virtual desktop, you don't necessarily um, close the programs on that desktop. They're just going to move back to your primary. I would have to actually manually exit that application. And that's actually pretty cool because that's done for your safety. So when you shut down all your desktops, your virtual desktops, you're not essentially losing any work. I've just completely destroyed all my virtual desktops and left my primary. So how again, how do you do this? So we do have our, our um, task view button here. And if you do not see your task view button, you can just right click your taskbar and choose show task view button. I can remove the task view button if, I, if I'd like to. I just removed it. But I'm going to go and I'm going to show the task view button. Um, I'm also showing Cortana as an icon instead of a search box. I really don't like having this search box here. I feel like it's just taking real estate on my screen. So I just turned it into a little icon that I could just click and then it would display my search box. Um, and that's it. That's really what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, virtual desktop usage in Windows 10. I believe this comes in all flavors of Windows 10, Home, Pro, uh, and Enterprise. Um, and whatever other versions they came up with, student and whatnot. Very, very cool feature. Task view is actually really nice. So remember, you just click on the little new desktop plus on the bottom right corner, or you just simply right click on an icon and select move to, and you can select either a new desktop or you can select a pre existing desktop that you already had created. Um, and that's virtual desktops in Windows 10. Thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate all my viewers. Again, um, every person that comes, please subscribe. Um, working on building up my fan base and, um, you know, getting more uh, more content out to you guys. Um, again, I'm approaching 5 million views. I want to say thank you to everyone who has previously visited my videos. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and visit again. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.